Welcome. I'm Jenny from Leeds International Piano Competition. We are delighted to be here at Leeds College of Music today to bring you a Q&A session with the Lang Lang International Music Foundation Young Scholars Programme. So let's get started and let's meet our scholars. Hi everyone, I'm Eden. I'm 19 years old. I'm from Los Angeles, but I recently moved to New York City to begin college. I now study at Columbia University, uh, taking political science and also the Juilliard School studying for piano performance. Hi everyone, I'm Chelsea. Um, I'm 17 years old. I'm currently studying at Juilliard Pre-College. Uh, it's going to be my last year next year. And I'm studying both classical voice and piano performance. Hi everyone, my name is Amir. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Boston, uh, Massachusetts. And I study at Harvard University and the New England Conservatory. Great. Great. Uh, so first of all, tell me what, uh, what is a young scholar? So, oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, Chelsea. So Long Long, uh, one of the very world-renowned pianists, uh, he started this foundation about 10 years ago to help support young pianists' careers. Um, yeah, and it's really great. We get to perform and interact with each other and interact with people who've never heard of music, never experienced move music before. And yeah, the three of us are scholars from the 2016 to 2018 session. Great. And what sort of experiences do you get during the scholarship program, Eden? Uh, so during the scholarship program, we get a very big range of experiences mm -hmm. from performances in big halls, but also we do a lot of outreach work. Mm -hmm. So uh, Long Lung believes deeply that music is a gift to be shared. Uh, and that, that has the potential to really change the world and our relationships with the communities around us. Mm -hmm. And so what we've had the opportunity to do is to go to a lot of schools and uh, interact with uh, children who may or may not have had the opportunities to uh, grow musically that we have had. And so what we do is we perform and we teach and we talk to them about music and uh, we just try to have fun with them. Great, brilliant. And you've been in Leeds for about a week or so now, and then you're heading to London. Um, Emma, tell us about your time in Leeds so far. What yeah, been Leeds, up to? Leeds has been fantastic so far. <laughs> Great. Um, I love the city. Uh, it's a beautiful city, um, quite big, a little bit bigger than Boston. Um, <laughs> and, you know, one of the parts of Leeds that I've really enjoyed exploring is Roundhay Park, which is, you know, one of the <clears throat> largest parks apparently in the UK um, near a city uh, and so it's really nice to just like walk and like clear my mind. Okay. Also yesterday I got to visit Harewood uh, which is uh, the mansion of one of the earls um, here <laughs> so that was pretty <laughs> wild. Um, it was really beautiful, took some great photos. Brilliant, great, well you're very welcome. Um, let's hear a little bit more about you guys. So who wants to go first? Eden, talk about how you started to play the piano for everybody. Um, so, I started the piano not for any real particular reason, <laughs> uh, no origin story there, but, uh, <laughs> but I really grew to love it. Uh, I remember starting to perform probably when I was uh, seven-ish, mm. and uh, first time, actually the first time I played, uh, it just kind of flowed, and uh, I really didn't expect that at all. I went home and I was like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I actually like this thing that a lot of kids are nervous <laughs> about. And, uh, so I just started studying more seriously, mm. and I actually found that it was a great outlet for, you know, emotionally and also um, something for me to communicate with, mm. you know, with other people. Mm. Great. And Chelsea, you're nodding there. Yeah. Um, well, for me, it's a little bit different because I think I have a quote-unquote origin story. <laughs> um, my mom is a self-taught pianist, and she played in our church a lot. So we had a piano at home, and... Uh, I guess even from a very young age, two or three years old, I would always be experimenting with a keyboard and I begged my parents for piano lessons and they refused to give them to me <laughs> because they're like, you're too young, this is pointless, you're, don't, don't start. And then after a while, I think I got annoying enough with my begging that they <laughs> agreed uh, when I was almost five years old to start piano. And Amir, what about yeah, yourself? My, my story is not too different from, from Chelsea's. So I have two older sisters. Um, and both of them were taking piano lessons uh, from when I was very young, probably age of two. Um, and I would always hear the music flowing through our home because we had this one small spinet um, right in our kitchen. And so, you know, I would hear the music, I'd hear, you know, what they were creating, and I'd be like, oh, I really want <laughs> to, like, do that. I want to, you know, be like my sisters. Um, and so from the age of, I believe, two, I, I would always, you know, 
play around on the piano, just like kind of hit the At key, two. pretend to play. Well, yeah, I actually saw a video my dad showed me one of the, <laughs> he, he finally digitized some of our videos. And so I saw one of me just like, just hitting random. Could you even reach? Looking around. Yeah, I was up on like the high bench, my legs were dangling down. Um, and so, and yeah, so I begged my parents for lessons. They didn't want to start me too early because of the fear of, you know, turning me away from music at a young age. Um, and same with my, my teacher, um, who, who eventually became my teacher. She didn't want to, you know, start too early. Um, but finally, at the age of four, um, started and the rest is history. Great, thank you. I think a lot of people that will be listening and watching right now will be really interested in your experiences with the Long Long Foundation. Um, let me ask a cheeky question first. What, what was your first impression when you met Long Long for the very first time? What was he's that like? So cool. Yeah? Like he's so <laughs> chill. He just came up and gave me like a bro hug. I was like, okay, <laughs> perfect. What about really you down to earth. Yeah. He's so uh, first time I met him was at a master class in, uh, in, in LA. Mm. And uh, he just walked in and I was like awed because I'm like a kid. He's long, long. <laughs> play for him. But uh, no, he was super nice. Came over, said hi. And I was like, all right, I, I actually am looking forward to play for him now. Right. And then you went straight and did a master class with him? Uh, there's like five minutes, you know. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Scary. I'm glad. That sounds great. I'm here. Yeah, just to add on, I, I, I had the you know, same sort of impression. Long Long is just like radiating with energy yeah. and like yeah. positive vibes. And then, you know, what amazed me about the first time I met Long Long is that, you know, he had a busy day going on. This was also in, uh, no, this was in Las Vegas. Uh, Eden and I did some performances with Long Long. Um, and he just took like an hour where he, you know, he could have been like, you know, planning his next like recital or, you know, taking care of like other business. And he just like sat down and was just like chatting casually with me, like asking if I wanted any advice and like who my teacher was and like, you know, just talking about music and about all of these incredible things. And to think of, you know, one of the greatest pianists in the world, um, you know, giving back in a really organic way um, that doesn't do him any self-benefit in the, in the short term um, is really, you know, awe-inspiring. And so that's why, like, I really look up to him, not only as a musician, but as a human being and, you know, what, what yeah. we can all do. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about if there's a particular, one particular thing that you've learned from Lang Lang during your time on the scholarship. Does something in particular from him stand out? I think it's really inspiring. Um, how passionate he is about spreading music education. I think that's definitely trans like transferred into my life. Um, he's very devoted and, and will go to no end, I guess, mm. to really make sure that everyone has access to this music. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people lack, a lot of art artists lack. And I think that, yeah, he's so good at spreading that. He's so good at making everyone feel like, yeah, that's something that we should all do. Mm. Um, and in terms of your professional development as a pianist, is there something or a few things that feel really important to you that you've learned during the scholarship program? So in terms of you as a, a, a pianist moving forward? Uh, so I've learned to really stretch my imagination pianistically mm -hmm. and also as a musician, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about the way my music would, it can interact with communities. Um, because before then, a lot of it was very personal. Uh, I played, you know, for emotional fulfillment, but he really got me thinking about, like, uh, you know, how I can use music to bring the community get together. So, like, uh, oh yeah, I was kind of inspired to do. Um, I went back to my parents' hometown in China and did a couple of concerts, like benefit concerts. But uh, I was kind of nervous about speaking Chinese. But uh, a lot of the people hadn't weren't familiar with classical music, so I uh, kind of practiced kind of gave them short introductions to the pieces. So it's kind of like trying to use my brain like uh, in that way to really make classical music accessible. Mm. And we've spent a bit of time together already this week, Eden, and you often talk about music and communication coming yeah. hand in hand. So that's really great to hear you talk about that too. Amir, anything that stands out as something you've learned that you'll take forward? Yeah, I think that just, you know, long, long, um, his creation of this foundation and all of the work that he does through this foundation, um, you know, from the Young Scholar programs to, you know, giving public schools in the United States and China the opportunity, um, giving rather the children the opportunity to have a music education. Um, 
<clears throat> to all the work that the foundation does in hospitals and schools, I think that that has inspired me personally as a musician and as a person um, to moving forward, um, kind of pursue a career in piano that's not only about mm. you know giving concerts, but okay. it's about making social change um, through music and making real impact on people's lives. And so that's one of the greatest things I've taken away from the Young Scholars Program is you know the reason he, he does this, which is ultimately a very selfless mm -hmm. reason. Great, and it's been brilliant to have you guys here in Leeds with us, and it's the first time that the foundation and Leeds International Piano Competition have worked together in a partnership in this way. So you've been doing loads of stuff. You've attended um, Alessio Bach's recital, a masterclass. We had a community performance at our partners, Besbro Pianos, and we've just come from a primary school this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if one of you could tell us a bit about your experience of those activities and those community and engagement activities we've been doing so far. Um, Chelsea? Yeah, I guess I'll say something. I think, well, I, the first thing that we really did was attend the Alessio Bax's recital, which was really incredible because he's such a refined pianist and that also was obvious when we had a master class with him. Um, he really thinks so deeply into the detail and it's just, it's really inspiring to have a class with him. I think, honestly, the most, the brightest part of my week has been this morning. Uh, we went to, where was it? St. Nicholas's Roman Catholic Primary School, so in Gitton. Just yeah. really close by, actually. We're only a couple of miles away now. Yeah, we went there and the kids were just so responsive and so excited about music and they were all so sweet and well-behaved. I was very impressed very surprised. <laughs> we shared a few videos as well, so if you look at our mm -hmm. Twitter, if people check our Twitter out, they'll be able to see a bit more yeah. of that. Um, what did you guys feel about this morning at the primary school? Oh, I, I was a little uh, kind of disoriented because all the kids, <laughs> first, they're really well behaved. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they have this kind of curiosity yeah. that like, as I guess I, like, I don't know about you guys, but as I've gotten older and, uh, you know, on my own musical journey, yeah, it gets a little difficult sometimes and you kind of lose sight of that whole curiosity mm -hmm. that you begin with. Mm -hmm. And so seeing that was a great reminder of, for me. Refreshing. Yeah, it's like, it's just this kind of natural like passion for it. Um, no, I, I, I love playing for them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was really incredible to see the children really embracing everything um, that we saw them do that day. They sang for us in between <laughs> our performances for them, and that was really beautiful. They let us join in with their choir practice. Mm -hmm. um, we stopped by different classrooms, and you know, every time we interacted with them, they were so energetic. As Eden said, they were so curious, and ultimately, you know, they were just you know soaking everything in mm -hmm. and really living life to the fullest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you've got a couple more activities here in Leeds. So coming up on Saturday, you'll be at the Howard Assembly Room with your recital. Um, anyone want to talk about their repertoire for that evening? What will, you, what will we be hearing if we're attending? Uh, Amir, are you <laughs> starting the program? Sure. Yeah. Um, I will be performing Haydn's B minor sonata, uh, followed by um, Funerai, uh, which is a piece by Liszt in the Harmonie Poetique Religieuse. Um, set of pieces. Yeah. Great, and how, how did you come to choose those? So the, the Haydn is quite a unique uh, sonata. Um, I was, you know, we had tea with Dame Fanny Waterman <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> um, and you know, she pointed out it, that it's, it's one of those sonatas that has a quite particular sense of humor, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, really something that I cherish in music. Um, and you know, it also has a very interesting character but across the movements. Um, and then Funerai um, is a very, you know, I, I would say it's a profound piece because it was written by Liszt, um, you know, honoring his friends who uh, passed away um, in the failed uh, revolution in Hungary. So that, that is a piece that I always think about a lot because it's very personal to Liszt. Um, and so it's been really, really interesting working on it. Wonderful. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. And Eden? Oh, uh, I'll be playing three preludes, uh, Rachmaninoff's Opus 23, numbers 2, 4, and 6. And so how I came to choose those was I'd always wanted to play n number 6. It's, uh, it's just this very almost like innocent kind of melody, uh, has a kind of floating background, dreamlike. And I think I remember reading that uh, Rachmaninoff <laughs> wrote it after his daughter was born. 
And it's really evocative of that because it's almost like he was, uh, you know, what, wondering at the whole event. Uh, but like afterwards, like at night, it's like, it's like an afterglow kind of thing. And so uh, I told my teacher and he thought uh, it would be good to have a set to complement that, that. So I, he, we chose uh, two and four, which have greater variety. And I'll also be playing the uh, Chopin Fantasy Opus 49. And that one I chose kind of for its challenge because mm-hmm. as a fantasy, it doesn't really like say wander as much um, harmonically. It's more of a structure kind of thing. Uh, it begins with kind of a funeral march, uh, launches into uh, kind of virtuosic passages. And eventually he surprises you with a kind of chorale in the middle. I just think it's a, mm-hmm. also full variety, but as a whole is very powerful. Wonderful. And I'll be playing last. I'm playing a set of Schubert Impromptus, Opus 90. Um, I have, I guess I chose it because I always have loved those pieces. Um, number four was one of the first pieces I ever played. I was about, I think, like eight years old when I, when I started playing that specific piece. And I was thinking to myself, um, actually, I... I sat through the entire Van Cliburn competition last year in the hall, and a few people chose that as part of the program, and I had never realized how effective of a set of pieces those are. And yeah, I just decided to learn it, so it's beautiful. So as you've been answering that question, we've had um, a comment uh, comment and another question sent through. Mm -hmm. We'd like to know, so Sophie from Best Row Pianos would like to know about nerves. So talk to us about... Do you get nervous? Mm -hmm. And if you do, how do you help yourself through those nerves? Um, Yeah, so I I don't think nerves have ever gone away (laughs) completely, (laughs) but I think that, you know, some level of nerves and excitement um, can actually be really beneficial to a performance Mm -hmm. um, because it kind of gives it that extra kick that makes a live recital, you know, very different from, let's say, a recording. Um, So... Dealing with nerves, I think, you know, it's always nice to have things you do, like, before you play. For me, I like to drink water, stretch a little bit, eat a banana, very important. (laughs) That is helpful, yeah. Um, Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, briefly about nerves. Yeah. Um, Like Amir said, they can actually be beneficial, but also because when you get nervous, you know that it actually matters to you and you want to do well. And I think that's that's... just a great feeling to have, to know that you deeply care about it. Mm. Um, uh, <laughs> no, no. Too much nerves. Yeah. Not too much Not nerves, too just much. the right balance. Yeah. Chelsea, do you get nervous? Um, actually, you know, um, yeah, well, I always get nervous. But I, <laughs> as for managing nerves, I took this elective called performance psychology mm. in Juilliard. And it's really interesting because nerves are proven to be a really beneficial thing. And there's something that's really good for a performance. Um, what you can do, I think, to make sure those nerves are more excitement and not dread and fear mm-hmm. is <laughs> there's, there was a study shown where if you just reinforce in your head that you're excited and that you're not scared, if you even just say the words out loud and not, like, I guess, conf- affirm to yourself that you're scared of the mm-hmm. performance, mm-hmm. Um, even if you don't believe it, just saying the words out loud and thinking it actually improves your performance by, I think, a really high percentage. I think like 50, 40, 50 percent. Yeah. So would that be your top tip? So if anyone watching is feeling nervous every time yeah. you play? Just make yourself, yeah. make yourself excited. Make yourself yeah. believe that this is something like you're, you get to share music. You get to share something that you love with so many people and you get to communicate with them in that way. So that should be something that's really exciting. Yeah. And eat a banana. And, and eat, bananas. eat bananas. <laughs> yeah. Very important. Yeah. Very important. Yeah, it, it works. <laughs> it does. No yeah. bananas today. Well, it get you one before the Howard <laughs> Assembly Roof's performance. Um, so we've heard a little bit about your upcoming repertoire for Saturday. Do you have, this is a tough question, do you have a favourite piece? Oh, God. I'll give you a second to think. <laughs> it's a big question. Anyone ready to go? Does it have to be piece? piano? Does it have to be piano? Does it have to yeah. Can we do like one piano and one non? Let's do that. Let's make yeah? it easier. So let's okay. hear your favourite piece of music and then your favourite thing for you to play, I think. Okay. On the piano. That we have played or to play? To play. Your to play. To play. Um, Is it too big a question? Uh, favourite piece? I can yeah. name just, a, it's not a piano piece, but <laughs> I really like Astor Piazzolla's Cafe 1930 mm-hmm. from the Histoire du Tango. Um, it's, it's, 
I like it because it's so different from what I normally play. Mm. Uh, I just try to transcribe on the piano sometimes. <laughs> but um, it just has so much uh, flavor, like enjoyment of life in it. It's, al it's alternately like happy, sad, contemplative. Mm. But uh, I don't know, I, I just think it's an exciting piece. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, for me, um, I guess I'll say piano piece. I've always loved Schubert sonatas and I think my favorite one is the big B flat major sonata. Um, I haven't played it and I hope to play it one day, but it's probably not in the near future. Um, I think as for a non-piano piece, probably have to say um, Strauss's Four Last Songs, which is written for orchestra and soprano. Mm -hmm. And I also, not in the near future, but I hope to be able to perform those someday. Beautiful. And sorry, did you have a favorite piece you like to play at the moment, Eden? Uh, at the moment, it's got to be one of the, like the, right, the right one now? I said earlier, yeah. Opus 23, <laughs> number six. Mm -hmm. uh, I was drawn to it like very early, never had time to, you know, play it along with my repertoire, mm -hmm. finally get to play it uh, along with other preludes that really help inform mm -hmm. the whole set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, I'm in. Yeah, for me, um, in terms of what I enjoy performing, I think it really changes seasonally <laughs> with whatever. Yeah, that's true, yeah, that's true. Whatever is in my repertoire. Um, however, if I were to say, you know, a piece of music that really speaks to me, um, Stravinsky's Petrushka, both the, uh, the original orchestral score as well as Stravinsky's own transcription, uh, which was dedicated to Arthur Rubinstein, um, is quite an incredible piece of music that I've always felt a connection to. It has a beautiful story behind the ballet. Um, and also, Stravinsky's orchestration, uh, you know, both in the actual orchestral score, um, is quite, was quite revolutionary at the time and is, is really beautiful to listen to. Also, the way that he was able to bring that orchestration into the piano and really turn the piano into you know, something that sounds like 60 people playing um, is quite unique, and I, and I really treasure that. Great. So everyone should look up those pieces if they don't know them already. Top tips. Please. Yes. <laughs> and we talked a bit about preparing with nerves, and we've heard a bit about, about the level of research as well that you guys put into mm -hmm. getting ready for performance. Um, what about how else you're supported during performance? So we've got another question that's come in from Jane. Who else, who's your, in your support networks, and who else helps you, helps you to where you are now? The parents. Yeah, yeah. Really? The parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um, parents. Should we do a shout out to your parents? Yeah, shout yeah, out yeah. to the parents. <laughs> Dad at home in LA. My mom's uh, with me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> teachers, definitely. Teachers, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Want to shout out to your teachers? I'm going to give a shout out to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> she's definitely watching. <laughs> um, you know, she's always supported me yeah. you know, forever, as I'm sure. And Chelsea? Yeah, I, I really have to say that. And yeah. um, I f of course, friends and teachers that are always there to encourage you and to give you help when you need it. It's, it's a really great community to have, yeah. Great, I think everyone enjoyed the shout out moment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Lots of love in the room. Okay, so we had some um, questions sent in from some fans in advance. Okay. So I'm gonna start reading some of those to you now. They have amazing names, everyone that submitted a question. The first question for Eden here, it's from Penguin Goggles, mm -hmm. who says, after a lot of practice, I still make some mistakes during the performance. Is this normal for a piano player? Yeah, it's totally normal. <laughs> like, I, I'd totally be lying if I was like, no, it's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, you aim for a level of perfection. It's an ideal. Mm. The thing with ideals is uh, you never really can realize them. It's the very nature of them. Mm. Uh, you... Of course, when you're practicing, you go over everything slowly. Uh, you stretch your imagination uh, as to what techniques you can use to really, uh, you know, get to know the piece. Uh, if you go into a performance with a mindset of like, I'm prepared, I've tried, you know, certain passages in a lot of ways, then it really helps. But if you make a mistake or two, I mean, it's just part of the live experience of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's okay too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, anybody else on that one? So practice and making mistakes? Uh, well, I just, I think, uh, like he was saying, you never reach perfection. And I don't mm. think that should be the number one goal, being right perfect, on. because that's not what music is about. It, it's not about 
making everything flawless and showing showing off on stage. It's really like like Eden was saying, communicating something and just be showing your music to an audience. So yeah. Great. Yeah, Very good. positive answers. We love that. <laughs> um, we have a, a really interesting question here from Lang Lang Saber. So question here for you, Amir, to start with. He says, I'm a beginner at piano. I love music very much. In your opinion, what is the first step to take for beginners? I big say, question. Okay, this, this is a big question. <laughs> but I think it has a simple answer, um, which is to find a great teacher. Because I think a teacher is absolutely the most important thing about you know, becoming a musician or even starting to learn music. Um, and as long as you're able to find someone um, that you're on the same page with, um, that is first and foremost going to nurture your love and your passion for music, you know, before anything else, um, I think that's the key to, to really starting piano. Great answer. I'm hoping someone watching today might start playing, well, not even tomorrow, just later today. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Hopefully. Um, Chelsea, from a blue flower, this is who sent the question, it's a technique question. When mm. I practice, my speed always is getting faster. How can I control my speed? Use a metronome. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, yeah, you probably heard it 10,000 times, but um, use a metronome. And when you practice, really listen. Listen to, listen not only to the notes, but the spacing between the notes and just, yeah. I, I mean, everyone I think has a somewhat of an innate, like, Temp feeling of tempo, so just listen to that. And metronomes are there for a reason. <laughs> you can download it for free on on the App Store, oh, on so whatever. You it as an app yeah, you can have it on your phone. Home. You can, do yeah. <laughs> Eden, you are nodding there. You're a fan of a metronome? No. Oh, I mean, like, <laughs> no, not a fan <laughs> but it's of necessary. Yeah. It's necessary. Like, no they one totally like yeah. are there to nag me. <laughs> um, uh, if you're speeding up, I guess. Uh, I, you may not be deriving enough, say, like meaning out of every note. Right, right. So it's mm -hmm. really good if you give some more, you know, character mm -hmm. to every note you're playing. Make sure you can hear it in your head before you produce the sound. That's just a, a, a trick I use. Lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, let's have our next question. So this one is from Boring Fox, is their name. And they say, what would you do if you met someone that doesn't like your music? You know, I, I always try to you know, learn from the people around me. And so whenever, you know, someone, let's say, comes up to me, let's say, and says like, oh, I didn't like the way you played this, you know, hypothetically, I would say, okay, awesome. Like, could you like give me like a little bit more detail? Like, um, like what can I change? What can I do differently? Because I find that, you know, if, if you're always just, if you're only listening to praise, you're mm -hmm. not going to get much better. But as long as the criticism is constructive, I think that's the most helpful thing mm. for improvement. Yeah, right. So you're open. Yeah, open taking it, taking advice is really helpful. But I also think that if it's you just you can't care too much. I think about every piece of criticism you receive. I mean, of course, if it's constructive and it's helping you develop. Um, but yeah, if you if what you you're doing what you love, and you're giving it. I think like it's you're just spreading the joy and the blessing of music and if someone doesn't specifically like something you do then that's okay everyone has different tastes everyone has different styles and yeah great and we've been talking amongst ourselves about digital and piano and mm -hmm. mixing the two mm -hmm. so I have a question that relates to that that's come in already in advance from Ruby in Beijing who wants to know what is the most useful exercise to do when there is no access to a piano mm. <laughs> When we were at the school this morning, lots of children were moving their fingers mm -hmm. in time. Yeah. <laughs> is that useful or is that just a good finger warm up? It's useful <laughs> if you're really thinking about every note. Yes. Um, it's actually like psychologically like a proven study that like people who, they compared people who practice on a piano and people who just made the motions but heard every note in their head mm. and it was just as effective. Yeah. So that's something I do on airplanes sometimes. Yeah. 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 I think I think that really, really works, but it works if you have a foundation already in piano, right? If you're learning piano, um, I really don't know how you can learn without an actual piano, but it does help to listen a lot, mm -hmm. to study. Um, uh, 
yeah, I mean, music theory, ear training, and listening to actual recordings of different pieces, of different people playing those pieces. Yeah, that's a great way to study. Brilliant. So another question that's come in, and it's from My Songs of Cincinnati. Do you choose the repertoire by yourself before the concert, or do others decide that for you? I mean, I, it's a mix for me. Mm. Uh, I usually will have pieces I listen to mm. that I'm immediately drawn to. I want to play them. Mm -hmm. uh, other times, my teacher will recommend pieces that are also that are interesting, they're challenged, they're good for my uh, development as a musician. Mm. And so I'll consult between the two because obviously I don't know what I don't know, and that's what my teacher is there for, <laughs> to help open my eyes. And so I mm -hmm. really appreciate that. Great. Yeah. Need to say the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so a question for you, Amir, from Paperman. Sometimes when I repeatedly practice a song, I will make great progress in my technique, but I may lose my emotional expression. How can I improve it? You know, that's a very tricky one. Um, I think that in order to you know, continue playing the piece with emotion and feeling, um, you have to take a moment away from the piano mm -hmm. and think about the piece, or you could listen to the piece if you want, um, and think about why is it special to you? Mm -hmm. What is that connection that you have to it? Is there a story you think about when you play the piece? Is there an mm -hmm. image you see? Is there you know, an emotion you feel? Mm -hmm. And try to make that kind of the root of your playing. So every time you sit down to practice it or to perform it, while you're just sitting at the bench, you can just imagine whatever comes to your mind about your connection. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can you know, start to build it. Yeah. Excellent. That was wonderful advice. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Um, Chelsea, a question for you here from Mr. Wu. I've been playing piano for 10 years, but when I'm practicing for a long time, I can't always concentrate. What skills do you have to help you stay focused? And I know we all practice a lot, don't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Staying focused is not always easy, mm. got to say that. Uh, I think the key to concentration is letting yourself take breaks. Um, it's letting yourself be able to, sp like, yeah, focus for a certain amount of time, but don't try to force yourself to mm -hmm. focus because that's, I don't think that's constructive. I think um, you can build up your concentration. You can build up the amount of time you can stay concentrated for. So. Um, Try to time yourself and see how long, how long can I focus for, even if it's just 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And then set that and take, take note of that. And then eventually try to deliberately increase that time. Um, I, I, think, I don't think it's possible for someone to focus for too long at a time. I think scientifically it's 30 to 45 minutes before you, you start to completely go crazy but yeah we had the first rounds of the Leeds International mm -hmm. Piano Competition took place in April and they're mm -hmm. in Berlin Singapore New York and in Berlin we talked to lots of the competitors and lots of people talked to us about um, meditation and mindfulness and yoga you mentioned stretching do any of you use anything like that to get your brain into gear I meditate sometimes backstage yeah I mean like um, you hear a lot of noise but then you kind of it's not really say like think about nothing it's more just being aware of like uh, things like the feeling of your fingers on your legs mm -hmm. or like the weight um, mm -hmm. of your feet against the ground, the movement of breath through your body. Yeah. And you just, when you stop, you just realize that like, okay, you're, you're kind of more in tune. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. So I know that that's something else people could try as well. And great mm. tips from Chelsea too. Thank you. Uh, so a question, Eden, for you from Sylvia. I can't always make a great sound when I hit the keys. It sounds a bit stiff sometimes. How can I improve it? It's also a problem I have. Oh. Yeah. Um, I think about, uh, say, using the weight of your arm. Uh, producing sound, uh, you don't want to be just stressed about it. You, you also don't want to think about, uh, so sometimes you get tense when you're playing fast or loud. That's most mm -hmm. often when you get tense. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of think about making each note sing instead of making it um, reaching some kind of technical goal. Mm -hmm. So like that's that's how I think about it. I, yeah, Kelsey, you're nodding. I think, <laughs> I think if you are stiff, then the sound you produce will be stiff. So if you're trying hard to control a sound, that's also something that I was I've been struggling with. But I've like through a lot of teachers helping me, I've noticed that if you don't deliberately try to like pull and push the sound in the way that you want it, if you just be free, mm. the sound the sound will have a lot more air and will have a lot more freedom to it as well yeah 
Yeah, yeah that's absolutely right. I always try to you know, stay relaxed, mm -hmm. make sure I'm not having unnecessary muscular tension, right. mm -hmm. whether it's in the wrist or mm -hmm. the, the forearm, yeah. even like in the bicep yeah, or moving. shoulder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then, you know, just try, you're not working against the piano, you're working with the piano. Exactly. You and the piano yeah. are a unit, and so then you can really just like give it an organic mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. attack. Yeah, Ethan, you felt like you... Oh yeah, it was almost like that. Yeah. Yeah, like the piano, it's important to remember, isn't a completely static like tool. Mm -hmm. It's very responsive despite, you know, the nature of the hammers and strings. <laughs> right. And so if you try to work with it and you, you know, let the specific piano you're playing on um, sing to its strengths, then mm -hmm. that'll help. Yeah, brilliant. That's great advice there. Thank you. Um, so our last question that we were sent in advance from Clever Jing is a really fantastic question. So I think we'll hear from everybody on this. Let's start with you, Eden. As a young pianist, what do you think of the relationship between music and audience? It's, it's music and audience, mm. um, it's interesting because as a performer, you inhabit the role of a um, you know, performer, you're actually making the music, but you also have to have frame of mind, the frame of mind of an audience member. You're listening to music, you're responding to it, making adjustments. Uh, the audience are a really important part because they're not, you're not really an individual audience member. Mm -hmm. As a body, um, the fact that you're sitting next to each other, that you came out to um, hear the music at a live event, also really informs the context of the performance, the, the ambiance. The fact that in a live performance, um, it's different from hearing a recording, there's, um, it's because of vibrations that like vibrate through the hall, through people's bodies, and that's why you may feel differently. Mm -hmm. And so the audience, you know, in small ways like that, or not so small ways, mm -hmm. really contribute to the effect of a performance. Mm -hmm. um, we were with Dame Fanny Waterman, who of course, created the Leeds International Piano Competition yesterday and she was talking about how she loves when audiences are really engaged mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. nodding and it, that it's okay to smile and mm. even giggle at pieces and feel mm -hmm. really involved. Um, Chelsea, so music and audience, what's the relationship? Well, in, like, like Eden said, at the very core you, you are the performer and you're spreading the music to the audience. Um, I think, I mean, it's, I, I, can't, I can't say anything different, really. I think that's <laughs> like, such yeah. a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had, um, is there a particularly memorable experience as an audience member? So we've talked mm. a lot about you guys performing. Yeah, I, th I think one of the most, I guess, can we talk about like the most touching performance Please. I've ever yeah. attended? Um, well, for piano, that's one thing, and for other, other performances is another. But for piano, uh, I was really touched when I heard Mitsuko Uchida uh, live in Carnegie Hall when she plays Schubert and when she plays Mozart because she leaves you, she's, you can just tell how much she's just floating in the music and she's just so in love with it and it really translates to the audience. That's something that I hope to be able to do one day as a performer. And I think, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've attended a few opera performances which are just phenomenal and they're really touching, but I think it's with a voice, especially it's so intuitive and it's so natural that it just touches your heart. Right. Yeah, I think back to the question about yeah. music and the and relationship, the right. your relationship between performing and audience, yeah. um, I think is a very interesting point because I think it's very dangerous if we think only of ourselves as the performer, mm -hmm. just going right. outwards to the audience. I think that can, um, kind of create a sort of feeling of being static or mm -hmm. uh, constrained. And I like to think of, you know, the performance audience, re performer audience relationship rather, um, as much more of a two-way give and take mm -hmm. um, dynamic sort of thing. Right. Um, some of the things that Eden alluded to with, you know, the difference between a live performance and the recording, um, of course, some of it is physical in the, you know, the inhabitants of the, concert hall or whatever the venue is are actually changing the acoustics but I think it's also a mental thing because when, when you are listening to music there's and when you are performing music there's a connection I think unlike anything else mm -hmm. going on there and so in a, let's say in a performance setting where you could be communicating and making a connection with hundreds of people or thousands of people um, 
who are then processing the music mm. emotionally, um, linking it to their own memories, mm. processing it analytically. Right. You know, I think that really forms this incredible yeah. sort of feedback loop mm. um, in which you as a performer have a very special opportunity yeah. um, mm -hmm. to make music unlike you've made it before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's easy when you're on stage to just think about, okay, what have I worked on? What am I trying to do? What is my music about? But I think ultimately it's important to remember that it's not about you as a performer. It's not about how well you can play. It's not about what you can do, but it's about the music and it's about sharing it with an audience. And yeah. So brilliant. Well, I'm excited to come and hear you again on Saturday. Um, and if you. people can't get to Leeds on Saturday, uh, they might be able to visit London where you're at Wigmore mm -hmm. Hall. Are you looking forward to your yes. recital there? I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. Very much, yeah. So you'll be there on Wednesday mm -hmm. and it'll be a lunchtime recital. Any particular pieces you're looking forward to playing at our partners, Wigmore? I'm, I'm looking forward to playing um, uh, Liszt's transcription of Verdi's Rigoletto because mm -hmm. it's it's a really fun piece, uh, you know, it originated, you know, in an opera, um, and there, it, it's just fantastic to play, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm playing one piece, so that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> the whole of one. Yeah, yeah whole me too. <laughs> it's going to be a Rachmaninoff's second piano sonata. It's a very large, uh, technically challenging work. Mm -hmm. um, it's also unusual, again, in its structure, the motif. It's, the music is a lot darker than a lot of Rachmaninoff's music, and I, I really enjoy getting to explore that part of his personality, particularly the second movement. It's just, like, majorly depressive. <laughs> but, like, it's also, like, very powerful to get to, you know, explore that kind of depth of emotion with an audience. Mm. And so, like, the second movement, I'm really looking forward to playing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to be playing also the second sonata, but not by Rachmaninoff, by, uh, by Chopin. <laughs> and uh, yeah, also just one work in four movements. Um, it's a great piece. I'm really excited. It has the famous funeral march, which almost everyone in the audience will probably automatically mem re like recognize because it's one of those toe, toe tapping. It's one of those, yeah. Well, not toe tapping. Hopefully not. Please. We're like, we're like, like stomping because it's like it's so depressing. But there's a beautiful section in the middle which is just heavenly in D flat major, and it's just so beautiful. So. I'm excited. I'm excited Fantastic. for that. And before that as well, you'll be at Leeds Town Hall on Monday performing for yes. sort of nearly 1,200 yeah. school children from Leeds, which we're really excited about. That's our first big primary schools event. And so we're really excited that you'll be part of that. We're dressing up for that too. Yes. Yeah. We're performing, there'll be costumes, <laughs> animation, It'll all sorts great. going on. Yeah. And that's with our performer, Will Pick Van. So mm -hmm. we're in rehearsals all day Sunday to get ready for that. And <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we talked a bit about what's coming up in the near future. Let's look for really far in advance. What do you, or do you already have a kind of goal or some, somewhere you see yourself in, say, 10 years' time? Um, it's a long stretch of time. It's a long stretch yeah, of time. I, um, or where do you visualise yeah, yourself in the future? I totally visual, visualise myself mm -hmm. uh, doing something musically related. Yeah. If not performing, perhaps some kind of composing film scoring. Mm -hmm. Because I just love uh, working with music and especially the intersection of music and other art forms. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But... Ten years from now, there are so many possibilities. I also don't want to have a clearly defined goal and limit the uh, imagination of it. Brilliant, Chelsea. Uh, I hope all. I really, really hope to be performing still in ten years. Um, I hope I can keep both voice and piano. Um, I'm actually really excited because I just got my first invitation to do a recital half piano, half voice. So I hope that will stay <laughs> and will like develop even further. Brilliant. In the future. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm definitely not sure what I'm going to be doing in 10 years. <laughs> However, you know, as I, I think we spoke about a little bit earlier um, about Long Long and what he does through the foundation mm -hmm. and what we have gleaned um, from Long Long as an individual, um, as a pianist. I think that going back to what I've taken away kind of the most from this program, um, which is that you know, music is incredibly powerful, and I don't think that the power of music has been fully tapped yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, from Long Long's efforts to those of Daniel Barenboim, mm -hmm. um, with his uh, orchestras in the Middle East, um, 
to the efforts of Yo-Yo Ma. He does things at the intersection of you know, medicine and um, education and music. Um, those are really kind of my inspirations. Great. So, um, so I would music. love to do something you know, that takes music and brings it into other realms where it can really mm -hmm. have a social impact. Brilliant. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, guys. Um, welcome it's again here. to Leeds. We've loved having you. We're excited you. to go to Wigmore and all of the activities we've got there. I have one last question just before we wrap up. After your experience here at Leeds, will you be considering applying for the Leeds International Piano Competition? Absolutely. Definitely, yeah. 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 Hopefully we'll make it far enough to come here.